Welcome back to another episode of Strength and Conditioning for Esport Athletes. I'm Strength Coach Friedman. I'm a Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist through the National Strength and Conditioning Association and a Certified Personal Trainer through the American College of Sports Medicine. So in my last video I talked a little bit about strength and conditioning philosophy and how to break down a training workout and how the uh, this methodology that is used for other sports can be applied to eSport athletes as well. And I think it, it readily should be applied to improve performance and also hopefully cut down on uh, the risk of injury, you know, from uh, overuse or improper use sort of injuries. So in my last video I talked about four different steps uh, that should be covered in every training session in this order, right? So again, step number one would be your soft tissue preparation, right? Doing different types of self-massage, uh, myofascial trigger point release, things like this to get rid of trigger points uh, and to get your body and, and especially hands moving optimally so that they will not only perform well, but also not function in a way where it will cause damage to yourself, which, which can happen, which happens actually quite often um, for sports like eSports, where they're constantly, uh, where athletes are constantly doing repetitive movements. Step number two, again, would be your movement preparations. So these would be different dynamic warm-ups and different exercises and activities to prepare your fingers, get everything moving properly, get them warmed up in terms of blood flow, but also just getting the tissues mobilized so they can react quickly during um, the actual gaming session or doing your training session. The third session, again, uh, will actually be your training. So whether you're playing video games, you're competing in a video game tournament, or you're doing some hand strengthening exercises, which we will get to <coughs> uh, in subsequent videos. And finally, after your training session or competitive play session, you need to do your static stretches. These are very important for maintaining hand health and the flexibility of the fingers. So you make sure you definitely make sure you want to do this. But again, do this at the end of your training session, not during and not before, because static stretching, uh, as I mentioned earlier, can kind of mess around with the proprioceptors uh, within the hands and kind of cause a delayed react uh, reaction time for movements. So remember, again, soft tissue work, movement prep, training, and then finally your flexibility recovery stage. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about that first step, um, which would be your soft tissue work. Today, we're going to be using a tool that uh, most of you should have, your hands, right? So we're actually going to be using our hands to work our hands and to do some soft tissue work. So it'll be a pretty simple video. You guys should all um, have hands or know someone that has hands that can help you out if you need it. So we'll be able to um, work into that today. So I'm just going to do a quick zoom up, uh, a close up of my hands so you can kind of see the different things that I'm doing and how you can kind of work in and prepare those tissues for an optimal video gaming session. Okay, so here are the hands. Crucial part of many athletic, uh, athletic events and sports, including eSports. Now depending on what eSport game you play, you may have to use your hand in a different manner, right? So an individual that's going to be using some kind of controller is going to have to use their hands differently than someone who might be playing a phone game right? Um, or then someone who might be playing a computer-based game on a keyboard or using some sort of joystick, right? But all of these are going to be requiring the hands and the fingers to move and function in a variety of ways. And it's always good to just kind of train your hands from a variety of perspectives for optimal hand health, right? We want healthy hands that will be able to operate no matter what game you're playing. Uh, so I will be covering just a, a variety of things that should be applicable to uh, pretty much every eSport game that requires the hands. Okay, so <clears throat> if we look at our hands, of course there's a lot of bone, right? 
We have a lot of joints in the hands, in the fingers. Um, the fingers, uh, the bones are broken up in different sections, and between those bones is a lot of connective tissue, some muscle, and a lot of tendons that run from the fingers all the way up the forearm, right? So many of the muscles that actually control the hands are not situated right in the hands. We, we do have a lot of small muscles in the hands, but many of the stronger, larger muscles are actually further up through the forearm. And that, you know, if you just make a fist, you're going to feel all the muscles of your forearm, or uh, some of them, contracting, right? So, in terms of soft tissue work, we want to work into these layers of connective tissue. There's pretty much three layers of connective tissue. One that actually encapsulates each individual muscle fiber. Then you have one that kind of uh, bundles around each motor unit, which is a kind of collection of two or more muscle fibers. And then you have a third layer that covers the entire muscle belly. Sometimes these layers of connective tissue are called the fascia. Right? And we have other layers of connective tissue and in, in things that are uh, within our bodies as well. Sometimes what happens is this connective tissue, this fascia, can kind of get adhered to itself. Um, kind of bundled up, um, which can interfere with the functioning of the muscles as well as the range of movement of the joints. So we want to make sure we don't have any of these trigger points in there. Uh, well, the, one of the, the sites of, sometimes a site of uh, dysfunction is known as a trigger point. A trigger point is defined as part of the unit, muscular or connective tissue, um, that is not functioning like the rest of the unit. Sometimes we can feel these <clears throat> um, in the form of pain, like a little twinge here and there. Sometimes they get really aggravated and it's a consistent uh, level of discomfort. Um, other times we only feel them when we actually directly push on them. So you may have many trigger points through your hands and forearms that you just don't know are there. So today we're going to take a look at gently looking for some of these trigger points gently massaging the hands with um, your other hand and we're going to get the hands prepared for video gaming and hopefully maybe find some points uh, of contention, some issues where you may have trigger points that can be worked out to help your overall functioning of your hands and hopefully minimize any discomfort or, or future injuries. So the best spots to look are at the meaty parts of the hand. So within the palm we have some muscle a lot of tissue, and also here to the outside of the hand. So these are two of the best spots. <clears throat> and we can also kind of work into each finger. Although each segment of each finger digit is, is kind of small, so it's kind of hard to work with your finger. Um, there's also a variety of tools that I've collected from different countries that I'll be showing you in subsequent videos and how you can use those tools to kind of work in some of the smaller parts and really hone in on, on trigger points uh, in a way that you cannot do with your hands. However, I really think your hands are your best tool because um, they're always with you and you can really do a lot with them. Um, but I will show those other tools in case that's something you want to uh, invest in because it will definitely help your uh, overall hand health in the future. It will give you some more options of what you can do. So, when I start to do this soft tissue work on my hands, I usually like to start to the outside part of the hand right here, this, this outside meaty area. What I usually do is I kind of pinch the hand, usually between my thumb and maybe pointer or middle finger, and I just kind of start to gently pinch into that tissue, gently kind of massaging, sometimes back and forth or in a small circle, looking or feeling for areas of discomfort or areas that feel like knots. Many times people get knots like in their neck or back like, oh, I got a knot. Well, usually that knot is some sort of trigger point. <clears throat> How it's caused could be a variety of things. It could be from a previous injury, uh, just maybe how you usually sit if you have some kind of imbalance in your posture, or it could be due to uh, an actual subluxation of bone, meaning a partial dislocation. Uh, many people have partial dislocations, subluxations within their spine, so where the vertebrae are out of position, those can be pulling on uh, 
the muscles and tissues, and that can definitely cause points of irritation, which can result sometimes in a knot or trigger point. And those can be worked out, um, but I also recommend if you have subluxation, you're going to want to get that corrected by uh, a chiropractor. Um, but that's, you know, for you and your uh, doctor to, to decide. Um, another thing I just want to note, if you're having any sort of pain previously, um, then I would hold off from doing any kinds of uh, exercise or any work like this, right? If you're experiencing any kind of pain doing this, immediately stop. Um, it means you have some kind of pre-existing problem, and you're going to want to go to your medical doctor and make sure you're cleared for this sort of activity before moving forward. Um, this should all be gentle, right? This is to make your hands feel good. So if you don't have any kind of problems or real pain, you know, don't do it, uh, and, and definitely seek medical attention to find out what the issue is. All right, so once you kind of gently massage and pinch to this side of the hand, um, if you have any real issues, like a spot where you have a little bit of discomfort, feels a little tender, or you feel a bit of a knot, I recommend holding that position for about 20 seconds, gently massaging into it. And I usually like to do three to five deep breaths. Um, so if you find a spot, breathe in. And breathe out and do that three to five times. So I was feeling pretty good on the uh, right hand. So I'm going to start working into my left hand a little bit. And again, don't feel too much. Oh, there I feel a little bit of something, a little trigger point in there. So I'm just going to breathe through it, gently pinch into that area. Good. And this is just some simple stuff you can do yourself. You can also go for, you know, professional hand massages, um, or someone who's trained in this kind of thing can actually then work on your hands for you. Um, but it will be more costly, and you might not always have time to do it you know, right before a training session. So it's good to know how to do some of this self-care as well. Um, there's other philosophies in this sort of soft tissue work known as reflexology. Um, and those are individuals that usually use a wooden tool, <clears throat> sometimes plastic or, or stone or even metal, to work into the hand similarly to what we're doing now. But we'll touch more upon that in some future videos. So once you kind of get that outside part of your hand, the next big spot to get um, is between the thumb and the forefinger, the pointer finger. Um, so I usually start on the back side of the hand first, gently just kind of working in. It should be nice and gentle. Again, you shouldn't be really feeling any pain. If there's any pain, please stop um, and find out what your pre-existing problem is. It could just be a really bad trigger point. It could be something else, but it's good to get that checked out. So I kind of first like to work up by the thumb, and then I work kind of more into the middle. So here I'm feeling a little bit of a trigger point right there in that meaty part of the hand. And it's common to get them on this part of the part of the hand because there's a lot of muscle and a lot of crossing muscles and connective tissue in there. Good. Yeah, the hand's a very intricate system and there's really a lot of connective tissue that really allows for such um, all the fine motor abilities that the hands can do. Okay, so now I'm going to work a little closer to the pointer finger, to that side of the of that gap. Use your thumb, gently kind of massage in there. Yep, got a trigger point right here. Okay, I'm just going to move on. I don't want to make this video too long, but I'm just going to try to show you how to find your spot and how to work on these different spots. Okay, once you work through the back side of the hand, I then recommend working into the, the palm side. I do my best, best I can to show this on camera. But you kind of do it the same way. I usually start to the outside first, right? Working in here, gently pressing and massaging. And again, you can also kind of use that pinch method. Um, so you kind of can you know, have something to kind of, something firm to press the tissue against. Um, 
can just kind of go from spot to spot looking for any kind of area that feels a little uh, you know, uncomfortable and needs to be gently massaged. From there you can kind of work more into the palm. All right, so more into the center of the palm. Got a bit of a trigger point here. And many times not only can you feel it uh, in terms of the area will feel a little tender, um, but you might kind of feel something hard, right? So don't be pressing into the bones. I'm not looking to press bone, but you'll feel that the, the muscle tissue kind of feels a little, as some would describe a knot, kind of like a little bump almost. Good. So once you've completed that, you can flip to the back side of the hand again and gently work between the bones of the hands. Nice and easy, don't go hard. Again, we're not looking to cause any damage to connective tissue. Just a very gentle massage, all right? Again, we're really looking to work into, into the muscle, not, not the bone or, or tendon or anything like that. Okay, so I definitely feel it right here. Sometimes when you press a trigger point, you'll kind of feel it radiate a little bit. Because what happens is, uh, these trigger points, this kind of tangled fascia, or sometimes tangled muscle fiber, many times press on a nerve. And you can kind of feel a little of this slight tingle sensation kind of run down the hand um, when you're pressing on, on the nerve, which again, the trigger points kind of causing that nerve irritation. And again, we're working out that trigger point to make it feel better. Usually when you work to the trigger point, you should, within a few seconds, start to feel a reduction of discomfort. You know, usually within 20 seconds, you'll get probably about at least a 75% um, reduction in discomfort. It's not a perfect rule, right? But that's kind of a general thing. Okay, now I've kind of worked back around to the thumb side of my hand. I'm just kind of gently working in here. Um, also, I recommend making sure your fingernails are trimmed um, so you're not poking yourself with your nail. Um, you really just want to be using, using your thumb to be pressing in. Yeah, got one right in here. Alright, so my palms are feeling pretty good. Like, um, <clears throat> I actually recommend moving your hands around a little bit, maybe even testing out a little bit of gameplay for a few minutes prior to doing the soft tissue work and then retesting directly after and see if your hands actually feel lighter, quicker, um, that you have better dexterity and, uh, dexterity and overall movement capabilities. Um, uh, for a lot of sports, when they do this kind of soft tissue, people sometimes will see a dramatic increase in range of movement um, and just overall functionality before and after a quick few minute session of this kind of soft tissue work. So this should really only take a few minutes um, you know, even if you only can spare a minute or two, that's better than nothing. Ideally, try to go five to ten minutes, just going nice and gently, um, and just see how that feels. But just to finish up real quick, <coughs> I'm going to work into the fingers now. So I'm just going to kind of gently pinch the tissue between, you know, at each digit, each segment of the finger. I'm not going to, you know, mess with the joints or anything. Uh, gently pinch in. Pinch or just kind of press. Again, this should all feel good, right? <laughs> if it hurts or any discomfort, um, don't do it, okay? Uh, that's the disclaimer. Okay, so again, you're going to want to do that on both hands. Um, I focus primarily on one hand, but very simple video. That's pretty much how you get started for doing soft tissue work, using your hands to do some self-massage and some self-myofascial trigger point release. So hope you enjoyed that video. Give it a try. See how your hands feel before and after, and feel free to let me know in the comments um, 
if you had success or if you want me to go over any other aspects of, uh, of what I talked about today. In my next video, I hope to move on to doing soft tissue work through the forearm, um, so the lower arm, maybe even into the upper arm a little bit. Same thing, utilizing the hands. In the future, I will then get into using some of the different tools that can sometimes make things a little bit easier um, for doing the soft tissue work as well. So thanks for watching, and please tune in for future videos.